Oh, uh -huh. I think it's time for another stealth camping overnighter. I've got the all-terrain board with me today, and oh man, is it so much quieter than this street board. It's humid as balls today. It's started to cool down a little bit, and it's a tiny bit overcast, which is helping. But it is uh, 27 degrees Celsius, feels like 37. Anyways, it's pretty late in the day. I want to get there with enough time to uh, get all set up in that, so let's get there. Man, I don't remember this being like this. This was not uh, bulldozed last time I came through here. So we'll go investigate, but this may be a bust. This is the same general area I was at for the uh, torrential downpour thunderstorm trip. Yeah, what is going on here? This was all overgrown before and just a dirt trail. Well, we're at least around the corner from the road, so no one can really see me back here. There's no, no trespassing signs or anything like that. <sighs> yeah. What the hell is going on here? Wild. <sighs> that post, I know, is a sign that the trail I normally take is around here. Seriously, though, like, what? What is going on? When I was last here, none of this was like this. This was all grass, as tall as what you see around me with a dirt path going through. But now, it's like all bulldozed. I don't know what they're doing. This tree is a marker from the last time I was through here, kind of exploring around. And uh, there's a trail that connects through to where I stealth camped last time. Uh, but I, I can't see the trailhead. It's all like overgrown. And this goes all the way there. And if we follow that, we eventually get to the water. Oh, uh, I'm gonna explore around and figure out what I'm doing here. Here's the trail that connects through. It's very overgrown, but you can tell that the trail's there. The trail's still there, but it is so overgrown, and it'd be uh, fighting to make any progress through there. Oh, you know what they might be doing? They might be extending the paved bike trail up this way. I suspect that's what they're doing, and that's why they have this all bulldozed. Because I know they've been making a lot of efforts to uh, work on improving existing bike trail and add more. I don't think anyone's going to come through here, like from the city or anything like that. The only problem is, is because this is so bulldozed and open, the entrance over there just screams for people to come take a look. But uh, I think we're still gonna go through with this. I just gotta find a good spot. It's all marsh and water right past it. Yeah, <laughs> this is nothing like how it was. I don't know how many people are gonna walk down this way, but um, you can see my board over there. And there's this little cutout here. I think this might be where I set up. 
My only concern is that I'm right on an accessible path. Bit of a gamble, but uh, at the very least, for now, I'm gonna drop my stuff here. I think this is, uh, this is where I'm gonna set up base camp. Before, this is about as far as I was able to go down the dirt path that used to be here. And now it looks like there's a clear cut all the way through. So I don't know where that connects. So we're gonna go take a look. It uh, just keeps going. I have a feeling it goes uh, quite further north and connects to the, the next road. I'm not going to follow this all the way down to the end, turning around, but yeah, it's crazy. This, uh, I don't even think this path was here before. Keep all the ants and stuff away. So much cooler down here out of the sun. Kind of disappointed in that they've bulldozed all of this. My little uh, stealth camping paradise has uh, shrunk quite considerably. Ooh, and there's a nice breeze coming through here. Oh, it's so humid right now. Long time viewers already know all about this board, but for those of you who are, this is my uh, first video that you've watched, uh, this is a Shaw Boards electric mountain board. 36 volt drive train, eight inch wheels, and I've got four batteries stuffed into a custom top mounted battery case. In the meantime, I thought I would make myself a little bit of sustenance and replace all the salts that I've already sweat out. You might have noticed, I haven't done any like super crazy trips on my electric skateboard lately. If you watched my last little overnighter there, at the very end, on my street board, I had yet another wheel fly off. That's twice I've had that happen. First time I can understand because that happened at the rear where I was constantly having to remove the nut and uh, replace the belt. But last week, it was the front wheel and I almost never remove my front wheels for any reason. So I have no idea why that nut decided to just come off and I didn't really talk about it because it was just like a very end of the video thing on my way home but because I ground on the truck for like a good 15-20 meters to come to a stop I ground down the truck <laughs> like considerably like the the tip of the uh, axle got ground down by like a third so the truck is garbage I need to replace it the point that I'm getting at is that on all of these trips I just have so many things go wrong so frequently. It feels more than half I have something go wrong on these trips. And when I'm, you know, having to go out and do a section of the Trans Canada Trail, for instance, where I have to take time off work and get myself set up to get out there and then do multiple days, you know, uh, maybe up to a hundred kilometers or more on a given trip and I have a more than half chance of something going wrong and having to bail, that really kind of makes me not want to do those sorts of things. And I'm just doing these simple overnighters because I need to get to a point of reliability where I can rely on my electric skateboard to not have something horrendous go wrong. Maybe it's just because it's me and I'm a lot more abusive to them on the types of trips that I do compared to their expected use case. I also want to start leaning a little more into the, the Model 3 because I feel like we haven't done too much with it lately in terms of adventuring. can't believe I'm coming up on two years owning that car. Now the ground does seem a little tough so I may have some issues getting my tent pegs in but there's some uh, rocks around I could use as a makeshift hammer so we'll see. As always I am using my array of 3D printed tent pegs. 
I got some nylon, I got a single PLA, I got ASA, and PETG. Basically, every material under the sun. So, let's see how easily, if at all, this 10 peg goes into the ground. Oh yeah, she's, uh... <laughs> she ain't going in. That's as far as I was able to get that 10 peg in. It seems like it's in there pretty firmly. I guess uh, I'll just have to be careful with the 10 pegs and try not to step on them. It took a bit of effort, but we, uh, we got the tent set up. Couldn't exactly hammer any of the pegs in. And uh, I got a funny feeling all the ones I hammered in are all mashed up on the bottom. So I'll probably have to print some more, but for now, at least uh, I got the tent set up and then I can sleep. And I just gave up with these and I didn't even bother putting pegs in. I just took some large rocks. Actually, you know what those are? Those are like old pieces of cement, but they're like really degraded to the point they're kind of like crumbling if you hit them too hard. Well, it ain't much, but I think this is going to be home for the night. How's this look? This is probably the shot I'm going to use for my thumbnail. <laughs> perfect opportunity to just sit here and read but uh, the mosquitoes are finally starting to come out to play and I have what I think are black flies buzzing me too and then there's the ants this area has a shit ton of ants the sun is set and uh, she's starting to get dark I think I'll be retiring to my tent very shortly. I've only had one sign of uh, somebody uh, nearby, and that's just beyond this grass here. There's the uh, water, and someone went by on a kayak, and it was very close, so I had to uh, stay, stay very quiet as to not give away my position. But now that the sun's down, I don't think there's gonna be anybody on the water, and I'll be up pretty early in the morning to get out of here, so. Pretty nice little spot. The only issue was uh, getting the pegs in. We got the expensive, probably having to 3D print replacement pegs. At least one is broken. That's the uh, one of the nylon ones uh, right beside the wheel there. I know I've shown it before, but I also brought my uh, ROG Ally, which for those of you who don't know what this is, it's a Windows-based handheld gaming PC. Think Nintendo Switch, except it runs Windows. And it's for, it's basically a graphics card with a controller strapped to it. So we'll, uh, play a bit of this once we get all set up in the tent there. Oh man, I have a feeling it's going to be a moist night, man. There's already a condensation starting to form on my tent. And I'm right near uh, a marsh and open water. So maybe this was a, not a wise spot to pick for a camp, but not much I can do about it now. I brought my uh, super lightweight tent this time get all the ants off of this because they like to crawl over this. I feel like a dog going in a dog house whenever I go in here. Oh, she's humid. She's humid, bud. Let's get my rock alley out. Of There we go. So I got my uh, OBS running so I can record my screen. Uh, let's play Super Smash Flash. Which is like a fan-made Super Smash Brothers uh, Flash game. This has been around for years, decades even. And this is actually uh, pretty good. Uh, in Smash Brothers, I've always mained Luigi, Lucina, used to be Marth, and uh, Young Link. All right. Random stage.
keep getting messed up as to what Luigi I am. Elimination. Not bad for a fan game, eh? You've never seen this before. The uh, game, if you're interested, is Super Smash Flash 2, and it is uh, completely free to download and play, obviously, because it's a fan game.
So that's uh, ironically a usually Nintendo game, a fan version of it, playing on a Windows device. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, I don't have too too many games uh, on here, and most of them probably require internet just to launch. It can run Fallout 4 perfectly fine. I just need an active internet connection. You can see I've got Final Fantasy 13 installed, the native Windows version, uh, Ultra Street Fighter 4, Valorant, Counter-Strike 2, Gary's Mod. Battery life on this isn't too, too great because like I said, it's essentially a graphics card uh, with a controller strapped to it. So playing demanding games, you get about maybe 40 minutes of gaming. But yeah, I think that about does it for me, guys. I'm gonna hit the hay. Hope that little gaming demonstration was fun for you. And uh, yeah, catch up with you guys in the morning. Hopefully I don't wake up to a skunk's ass in my face again. <laughs> a few minutes ago, uh, just before five in the morning, I had two uh, what sounded like Middle Eastern fellows walk by. <laughs> the uh, tent down the uh, path so like half sure they saw me because it, it's obviously the middle of the night still they needed to use flashlights but I don't think they particularly cared uh, but yeah <laughs> just goes to show that even tucked out of the way uh, this wasn't really a, a good spot to pick to be a, a stealth camp spot anyways should be getting light in about half an hour 45 minutes, so I'm just gonna relax for a little bit. I think I'm still good. I don't think I need to boogie out of here because of those guys. I don't think they're gonna call me in or anything. <laughs> All right. It's about half an hour later, just before 5.30, and those guys walked back through, uh, heading back to where they came from. Um, because they probably parked at the head of the trail that leads in here. Uh, now that it's a tiny bit light, I can see them. Um, they had fishing rods. I guess they were in here to, to go fishing. Anyways, I don't think they particularly care about me. They probably just think I'm a homeless guy set up or something. But uh, out of an abundance of caution, I guess I'll get up and uh, start packing up and uh, get out of here. As you can see, the sky behind me is uh, just starting to get a little bit light. Too dark for the GoPro to capture anything, but uh, enough for me to start maneuvering around outside and start packing up, so let's do that. Uh, I know you guys can't see me on the GoPro, but I can see the sky behind me. Oh. Oh. Not too bad out this morning. Alright, let's get right up. Oh. <laughs> you can see the outline of me against the sky. So many neat birds and bird sounds here because we're close to the marsh. I had herons flying around, all kinds of birds I don't really see all that often. They're really neat. Okay, let me start getting this packed up. And by then it should be a little bit lighter so you guys can actually see me. The tips of my tent pegs actually didn't get uh, nearly as screwed up as I thought. So I'll have the one peg I gotta replace because it cracked the, uh, the tip. But yeah, there's just one. It has a tip that got slightly screwed up, and I can just file that down to a point again. So really, it's only the one one peg I got to replace, which is surprising. I thought for sure I beat the crap out of these hammering them in. Oh yeah, so much humidity. My uh, my tent is absolutely soaked. I'll have to hang this up to dry when I get home. I'm not normally a morning person, but. For obvious reasons, I get up super early when I'm stealth camping. Actually, even when I'm regular camping, I, just, I can't sleep in when I'm camping. But uh, at least I get to see these uh, sunrises, and it's definitely a sight to behold, man. Campsite all cleaned up. No sign that it was here. Here's where my tent was set up, and then the, the guys walked right past me. There's no way they didn't see me. I just think they didn't care. The amount of stuff Steve Wallace gets away with <laughs> makes me a little bit more bold, but still, I don't want to uh, push it too far, you know what I mean? All right, anyways, let's get out of here.
Okay, we made it back out to the road. No uh, interruptions from authorities. I'm nah, just gonna make it home. You know the drill, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.